Uh, welcome to the Full FX Unfiltered. This edition is on the sidelines of the Full FX at FIA Expo in Chicago. We're back in America, and I'm delighted to be joined by an old friend, Ed Mount, who is CEO and founder of Elysium Technology. Um, Ed, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. It's it's like old home week back in Chicago, <laughs> back in the, the whole FX crowd. It's great. Yeah, well, it's, you know, thankfully it's been good so far. Thanks for everyone's support. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the sort of the Elysium journey, you know, because you know, you're, a, you're a firm that you know, founded in FX. Your background is in, should we say, certain, a certain number of years in FX, a as a mine, yeah, a few. Um, <laughs> And then you moved to digital assets. So what kind of prompted the move? Yeah, thanks. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, we, we've been in foreign exchange for a long time. We, I was just telling the story that we had, uh, we founded the firm in 2001. We started doing this the way that we've been doing it, using database to capture transactions and offer real-time risk control to the FX community for our own purposes at first, yep. and then commercialize it over the years. and. Lo and behold, when digital became very popular in 2017, 2018, we were taking an interest in it and saying it's not an equity market. It's got a lot of exchange trading, but at the end of the day, it's about settlement risk, payment risk. Let's roll that all up. It's a lot like, it smells like foreign exchange. Mm. So it was natural for us to entertain different people who didn't know much about risk control in the digital space. And we wanted to create a, a product specifically for the new traders. Yeah. And unlike foreign exchange, they were much more concerned about where their settlement and their payment was because yeah. we never worried about that in FX. We just do a trade, move on. Yeah. So and, it, and it's a natural kind of, fit. Yeah, I mean, history's kind of you know, proven the fact that they needed some help with some risk controls and <laughs> people were, were right to be worried about where their money was. I mean, there, there's been challenges along the way. So what would you say have been like your, your key learnings from that, you know, I, from the last seven years, five, like, seven years? I, I, I like to think I came up through the Chicago O'Connor principle trading and yeah. then became institutionalized, but it was always about policies, procedures, control, and it's easy enough to control market risk. Everyone yeah. thinks they're good at that. But it's really, to me, it's also the credit risk, the legal risk, the operational risk, the regulatory risk, and the reputational risk. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you're not managing all those pillars of risk in one place, one of them is going to blow up yeah. and take the entire firm down. Yeah, and, and I guess in foreign exchange, a lot of that's done for you. It, it, it came natural to us, or we have huge support staffs over the decades of its evolution that compliance yeah. comes up every couple of years, regulation every couple of years, but we didn't have to worry about the legal authority to do business in a certain yeah. country. We had people that take care of that. We were, yeah. we were fortunate, but that's, as this evolved, any one of those could just pop up its ugly head and mm. take down the entire firm or lose all of your trading capital. So what's kind of, I mean, what do you think is the sort of, at the moment, what's the risk focus? I mean, we seem to have sort of, you know, dealt with that sort of, uh, I guess, like um, counterparty risk. You have some counterparty risk, you have some delivery risk. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's about, you create your market risk and your trading risk, and then you settle up assets and liabilities with your counterparty. And that needs to be a distinct step where, okay, we took our trading and now, I've got assets and liabilities with each other and it's become credit risk and we've settled these trades. Now, where do you want them? It's like, I'm not comfortable with you holding my assets. How about you pay them to this particular place? Yeah. So it's not much different than FX, except it's more explicit. You've got a lot of different opportunities to put them in different places. You self custody. You don't have the service infrastructure built around the digital asset world mm. that exists in the other asset classes, but it's coming. And you see the big institutions start custodians. You see them start payment rails. And yeah. there's a lot of great technology being built up around the industry. And the technology is the interesting one, isn't it? Because obviously, like, you know, that digital assets world has been largely associated with the evolution of Bitcoin and blockchain, to, you know, to name the two high profiles. But obviously, it's more sophisticated than that now. But I mean, how I mean, interesting or challenging is it to deal with these emerging technologies when you've actually, you know, I guess to explain myself more you know, in, a, in a clearer fashion, you know, FX is based upon older technologies, digital assets are new, 
how easy is it to blend the two? And so actually those, that new technology could work over here. That's the interesting part. That's what yeah. keeps me coming back as an engineer yeah. by training. I like you know, People are like, why are you still doing it? I'm like, it's interesting technology. Yeah. Some of the technology will be embedded and will come from the digital side and will influence the more traditional side. Yeah. Ways of payment. We're already talking about T plus one. How do people adjust to that? But foreign exchange is moving to T plus one when the digital world is T zero. Yeah. So they, they yeah. need to converge and take advantage of some of the core blockchain and settlement systems that are emerging and it, it'll benefit the foreign exchange world. And that becomes a question of scale. Exactly. So they say, oh, well, it'll never be on a blockchain. It's never fast enough. Yeah. There's a ton of investment going on in making derivatives of these. Mm. So it's um, it's fascinating. It's going to help the entire the entire industry. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's certainly a fascinating space for me. Ed, thanks for your time today. Great L to see you. Lovely to see you as always. Love to be. Thanks, mate. Sure. Thanks for watching, and um, we'll be back again soon.